angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary. And she conceived by the Holy Ghost. Now Mary, for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother Amen. of God, pray, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Now Mary, for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. How Mary, for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As veges men domine, he so for at Mundabur, the Babis me, Suvenivem de Algobor. Gloria Patri, Filio, Spiritu is Santo, Sicu de la Principio in Uncet Semper, et in Secula Seculorum. Amen. As veges men domine, he so for at Mundabur, the Babis me, Suvenivem de Algobor. Ostende nobis domine misericordiam tua. And salutare tu in thy nobis, Domine exaltationem mea, et clamo mea sette veniat, Dominus obiscum, et, et cum spirito tuo, ordebus. Exalti nos Domine Sancti Pater, Onipotente Tere Deus, et mita redini eri Sanctum Angelum Tuum de Celis, qui custodia et fove et protica visit et acque defenda Domnes Habitantes in hoc habitaculo, et Christum Dominum Nostrum. Amen. Amen.
nějaký třeba zvukový sláček, kdy mi tam že nevím, že tak si ho nevím, můj bátr, mého kulpa, mého kulpa, mého maxima kulpa. Někdy ho hlavně to byla tam mladý, jen si myslím, že neví, jak můj tak, tak, že mám dělat mi vám vlastní, tam jsem se zvolal, což tak je spal. Já to měl mladý, jak já měl, než jsem se zvolal sláče. Ale rád to tam najdal, můj tak máš. A že je to tím, že jsem to jistě si taky přišel, tak jak jít na tam. Amen. Oh, Fiti, O Deo, Omnipotenti, Beate Maria, Sempre Vigini, Beato Michele, Arcangelo, Beato Ioanni, Battiste, Sanctis Apostoli, Spetro e Paolo, Omnibus Sanctis e Fidei Padre, Qui è peccato in ogni scorgiazione, Vero e Opere, Meo Culpa, Meo Culpa, Mea Maxima Culpa, E ne ho prego, Beata Maria, Sempre Vigini, Beato Michele, Arcangelo, Beata Nivane Battista, Santos Apostolos Petrus Paulum, Omnes Santos et Te Pater, Orlavi pro me, ad dominum Deum nostro. Miseriato Ves, mi potenza e usit, mi spettati Ves, mi spettati per vostra vita eterna. Amen. Lugenze me sussione, me dimissione, me ritorno, storia, te di guardia, me sorti potente, miseri custodius. Amen. Deus confessus perfettitatis vas, Et In medio ecclesia pervito seo, sic in plevitem dominus spiritus sapiensi et intellectus, storam glori in vitebum. Vodem es compiteri domino et saleri nomini tua altissime. Gloria, Patria, Filio, e Spiritu, e Santo, e sicut erat in principio, e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. In medio ecclesia pervito seo, sic in plevitem dominus spiritus sapiensi et intellectus, storam glori in vitebum. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus boni voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, Grazie a tutti i musti vi corrotte, ma non gloria a tua. Domine Deus, ex celestis, Deus Pater Onipotens, Domine Figu di Genite, Gesù Cristo, Domine Deus, Amius Dei, Filius Patris, qui quale spettato mundi, miserere nobis, qui quale spettato mundi, suscite e applicazione nostra. Chi sede se dexeram Patris, miserere nobis, Omnia tu sol sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Iesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. Axo vobis, et cum spiritu tuo, ordemus. Deus, qui populo tu et alle salutis beatum, bona ventura, ministrum tribuisti, Presta quaesimus, ut quem doctorem vitae habuimus in teris, e decessorem habere mele amor in celis. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tuum, qui tecum vita regna ad un'eritati solitus sancto Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Deus, qui diligentibus te bona in visibilia preparasti, in fonte corribus nostris tui amoris affectum, Ut e un omnibus et super omnia diligentes, promissiones tuas que omne desiderium superant, consequabur. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum, Filium Tum, qui tecum vita regna ad humanitatis solitus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio Epistoli, Piazzi Paoli, Posti et Timoteo. Carissime, testifico corrandeo et Iesum Christo, Qui iudecatur ses vivos et mortuus, per adventum ipsius et regnum eius, predica verbum insta opportune, importune, ardue, obsecra, increba in omni patientia e doctrina. 
Et in templus cum sanem doctrinam non sustenebunt sed et sua desideria coacevabunt sibi magistros, corrientes auribus et de veritati quid mautitum evetem, et fabulus autem cogetentur. Tu vero vigila, in omnibus laborra, opus fabula evangeliste, ministerium tuum infle, sobrius esto, ego enim iam delibor et tempus resolutionis me instant, Bonum cetam in cetavi, cursum consumavi, fidem servavi, in reliquo a reposita res miti corona e giustizie, quam redit miti dominus in ina die, justus iudex, non solum aute miti seretis, qui diligum da adventum eus. Deo gracias. Os ius in meritabitus aviensiam in lingua es luquetu iudicium, res eus in corde ipsius e non sopratamuntu gressus eus. Alleluia, alleluia. Curravi Dominus et non penetebi Teum, tu es escelos in eternum secundum mortine Melchedete. Alleluia. Dominus Oviscum, e con spirito tuo, se quel si è salti i Vangeli secondo Matteo, gloria a te, Domine. E nello tempo le disse di Gesù, i discepoli suoi, cos'è si saltere e quel si sale fra gli uomini che in cor salire tu, e nello fare tu, tre nissi umitato fora, se con voce tu racomibus. Cos'è si slux mundi, non potes civitas absconti sopra monte imposita, Ne quoi accendum lucernum, et ponente al submondio, se sopra candelabrum ur luce ad omnibus qui in domus sum. Sic luce ad lus veste corem hominibus, ut videant opera vesta bona, et glorificent patrem vestum qui in celis est. Non ite putare, quam iam vene salvere, legum aut profetas, non vene salvere, sed ad implere. Amen, qui vedico vobis, donne transia celum et terra iotu unum, aut unus apes non preteri vita lege, donne omnia fiant. Qui ergo salverum tunum demandatis isis minimis, sed ocrueri si comines, minimus octavitor in regno celorum. Qui autem feceri de ocrueri, in manus octavitor in regno celorum. Lars, Tibi Christi. On this feast of St. Bonaventure, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. The uh, lesson is taken from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to St. Timothy. Beloved, I adjure thee in the sight of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to be the judge of living and dead in the name of his coming and of his kingdom, preach the word, dwelling upon it continually, welcome or unwelcome. Bring home wrongdoing, comfort the waverer, rebuke the sinner with all the patience of a teacher. The time will surely come when men will grow tired of sound doctrine, always itching to hear something fresh, and so they will provide themselves with a continuous succession of new teachers as the whim takes them, turning a deaf ear to the truth, bestowing their attention on fables instead. It is for thee to be on the watch, to accept every hardship, to employ thyself in preaching the gospel and perform every duty of thy office, keeping a sober mind. As for me, my blood already flows in sacrifice, the time has nearly come when I can go free. I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, I have redeemed my pledge. I look forward to the prize that is waiting for me, the prize I have earned. The Lord, the judge whose award never goes amiss, will grant it to me when that day comes. To me, yes, and all those who have learned to welcome his appearing. And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its taste, what is there left to give taste to it? There is no more to be done with it, but throw it out of doors for men to tread it underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city cannot be hidden if it is built on a mountain top. A lamp is not lighted to be put away under a bushel measure. It is put on the lampstand to give light to all the people of the house. And so your light must shine so brightly before men that they can see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to set aside the law and the prophets. I have not come to set them aside, but to bring them to perfection. 
Believe me, heaven and earth must disappear sooner than that one jot, one flourish disappear from the law. It must all be accomplished. Whoever then sets aside one of these commandments, though it were the least, and teaches men to do the like, will be of the least account in the kingdom of heaven. For the man who keeps them and teaches others to keep them will be accounted in the kingdom of heaven as the greatest. And the proper last gospel for the commemorated fifth Sunday after Pentecost is also a continuation from St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus said to his disciples, if your justice does not give fuller measure than the justice of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the men of old, Thou shalt do no murder. If a man commits murder, he must answer for it before the court of justice. But I tell you that any man who is angry with his brother must answer for it before the court of justice, and any man who says raka to his brother must answer for it before the council. And any man who says to his brother, Thou fool, must answer for it in hellfire. If thou art bringing thy gift then before the altar, and remember there that thy brother has some ground of complaint against thee, leave thy gift lying there before the altar, and go home. Be reconciled with thy brother first, and then come back to offer thy gift. How merry for grace the Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray Amen. for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. In the Holy Body, say, Fili, Sweetus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast Mass. On this, as we say, the Feast of St. Bonaventure, Bishop and Doctor. And we also commemorate today uh, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. St. Bonaventure, uh, born in 1221, uh, just towards the end of the life of St. Francis. But it was uh, because of St. Francis that Bonaventure received his peculiar name. His uh, mother uh, was in some distress uh, whilst pregnant with him and sought uh, solace from St Francis, who it is believed by laying hands upon her not only was able to tend to the ailment that was troubling her and give her that consolation and comfort of healing, but also too received himself some kind of premonition about the son in her womb, such that he cried aloud, O bona ventura, meaning O good fortune. So blessed was the beginning of St. Bonaventure's life. By the age of 22, uh, he would give himself to follow after the footsteps of St. Francis and became uh, within the order uh, a great light of learning and knowledge uh, of stability, of uh, serenity, and indeed so admired uh, was his uh, erudition and his learning that uh, he was known or is known as the Seraphic Doctor. He studied uh, particularly in Paris, he studied elsewhere too, but particularly in Paris where he struck up his great uh, friendship with St Thomas Aquinas. Indeed, the pair of them together graduated the same day with their doctorates and remained good and close friends. That's an important point to remember because so often uh, those uh, who read history with prejudice often suggest that the Franciscans and the uh, Dominicans were uh, at odds with each other, vying uh, with each other in the universities. And the truth of the matter is, that uh, far from that, they were often great friends and collaborators. Indeed, uh, St Thomas Aquinas was much appreciated, both uh, by Francis and Bonaventure, and indeed by Anthony of Padua, those three great patriarchs, we might say, of the Franciscan order. What they appreciated of each other, of course, was their similar vocation as friars, with their particular emphasis on learning and knowledge necessary to the seas of Rome and a cardinal's hat. So he rather, his humility rather lost out there. He thought perhaps that he'd got away with it, but the Pope said, well, if you won't be Archbishop of York, then you will be uh, Bishop uh, of um, uh, Albano, I think. I can't quite remember. 
Um, his writings, of course, and his education, uh, and sorry, his knowledge and his wisdom uh, retains to this day. And it had great influence at that time uh, uh, in the Franciscan order. Remember that St. Francis denied possessions of any kind uh, to his uh, followers. And so they had, to some extent, disavowed the notion of learning, of uh, scholarship. But Bonaventure got around this by suggesting that they could indeed study and go to the great universities and study, but just not own any books, borrow them instead. We see there St Bonaventure, as it were, being able to reconcile uh, or add to uh, Francis's uh, original charism, or we might say apply it in such a way as to benefit uh, the uh, Franciscans and indeed the order, as it certainly did. He died uh, whilst being uh, whilst attending the Council of uh, Lyon in 1274, where he had uh, strived uh, greatly uh, to uh, bring about the unity uh, of the church. There was uh, at this council an attempt uh, to uh, reconcile uh, East and West. And uh, so uh, good was he uh, at, uh, at this, so uh, charming and charitable was he to both proponents and opponents, uh, that all, all of the council uh, attended uh, his requiem. Now, of course, being a doctor of the church, uh, we heard the lections, as we always do, for uh, feasts of doctors of the church. That wonderful epistle from St. Paul to Timothy, exhorting him, both in and out of season, to remain faithful to the apostolic faith, to that doctrine that came from the apostles and indeed uh, St. Paul himself gave to Timothy, and which Paul, like the apostles, received directly from Christ. Remember that is St. Paul's great boast. Uh, that uh, uh, he received directly from Christ uh, the gospel uh, and had this affirmed or confirmed uh, by the apostles in Jerusalem. So that we can uh, honour St Paul as an apostle, as indeed, of course, we do, uh, but in, in, with equality, uh, we might say, with the other apostles who received, too, everything from Jesus Christ. And here, of course, is, as we reflected last Wednesday uh, in our conference on tradition, and will continue to do on Wednesdays, uh, this, of course, is the great boon of tradition, that uh, we know that the apostolic faith has indeed come to us from Christ, that it is indeed the teachings, the doctrine of Christ. As St. Jude remarks, it is that single deposit of the faith once delivered to the saints. And the Church has struggled through the centuries to try and preserve and maintain and continue and pass on that same apostolic teaching, that same teaching received directly from Christ, so that we may, all of us, receive the true gospel, receive the true word of God, and in so doing, be saved. And this is an important point to remember, my brothers and sisters, especially in the present time where there are so many conflicting and confusing ideas uh, floating about. There are all sorts of heresies and apostasies, uh, not always immediately obvious. Uh, old ones redressed in, as new ones, etc. It's important to remember that that which has always been has brought salvation. We have only to look at the generations of saints before these, these present times of confusion to see how the orthodox doctrine enabled ordinary people to achieve extraordinary things. Indeed, to become living saints, both in this life 
as well as we acknowledge and recognise that they have for the next. Consider the lives of the saints. Indeed, my brothers and sisters, I think uh, it's a great pity that in the contemporary church, uh, study and appreciation of the saints uh, is so lacking and, is, and has been waning for so long because the saints demonstrate to us that ordinary people can achieve extraordinary things. They can overcome themselves. They can overcome their predispositions, their predilections. They can overcome their foibles, their weaknesses, their failures. And they can achieve. They can change. They can transform. They can become different people. They, be, they, they, they can become new people. They can become reinvigorated people. They can perform miracles. They become true co-workers with Christ. They become cooperators with God's grace, not just for themselves, but for others. And we, my brothers and sisters, in the present age, are indeed in danger, as the Gospel warns us today. We are in danger of becoming salt without savour. We are in danger of becoming dried up old salt that is no good for anyone but to be put on the ground and be trod underfoot. So many of us decry, deplore the present situation and indeed identify it as a crisis in the church. This rejection of tradition, this rejection of the teachings that went before. And we do so because we know and we recognise that these new ideas and newfangled notions are untried and untested and many have been tried and tested before and found wanting, found lacking, found to be indeed dangerous. And nearly always, indeed always, with these false notions with these false teachings and ideas. They are driven and motivated by and come from a form of self-reflection. They come from the interior thoughts of someone who, when as they have shared them with others, have received some kind of flattery that has boosted their pride. and has given life to their prideful notions. Prideful notions, selfish notions. Because they're more often than not, heterodox teaching is about suiting oneself. It's about me, myself and I, fundamentally. It's because me, myself and I cannot reconcile that notion or that teaching from the received tradition. Because me, myself and I think I know better than all those great scholars and doctors of the church throughout the centuries. Because me, myself and I think that anything old is old hat, is useless and should be done away with. Because me, myself and I have such an opinion of myself. Because me, myself and I don't like that old teaching. Or don't understand that old teaching. Or have no interest in learning and studying that old teaching. Because what I think marries and matches with what I feel 
and what I feel is the only truth relevant to me. Any heterodox notion, my brothers and sisters, can be followed down to an individual's manifestation of ego. In contrast to orthodoxy and to those who strive to follow orthodoxy, because what they are forced to do sometimes or often is change and alter their thinking, change and alter their perception. Because the gospel and the apostolic teaching is something that we receive, it's something that we receive external to ourselves. Yes, we need internally process it, to understand it, to accept it, to believe it. But in so doing, we mustn't get lost within ourselves and forget that what we have received needs must be the same for everyone else. See, the beauty of the Orthodox faith is that it's the same for me, for you, for everyone. Which is why so many can adhere, assent and accept it. Because it stands objectively. Indeed it is objective truth. No one owns it, no one possesses it. It isn't somebody else's idea. It is what was received from God in Christ given to the Apostles. But we all of us can have a tendency in receiving that knowledge and internally processing it and finding that we disagree with it or are unhappy with it or cannot understand it or whatever, we have a tendency to seek to want to mend it and bend it and manipulate it and change it to our way of thinking or our preferred way of thinking, what we would rather it said. We see so much today in contemporary theology of asegesis. So where exegesis is taking uh, the Gospels or taking the Scriptures and uh, studying them, uh, we might say impartially, rather, or, or, or a, a scholarly way, an objective way, to understand and interpret them. Asegesis is when I interpret them through the lens of my own subjectivity. So that in the 20, 30 years it is since I was studying, I was taught when studying the scriptures to seek out commentaries, to seek out the wisdom, the collective wisdom and knowledge of the fathers of the church, of the doctors of the church, of people far more knowledgeable than I who were able to read the scriptures in their original languages who transcribed, transliterated, translated those scriptures. Those who were closer in time than I to the teachings of the, the fathers of the early church and thus of the, apostol uh, the, and thus of the apostles themselves and thus ultimately, of course, of Christ. And I was taught academically how to use and exercise prudence, how to use objective standards and criteria to critically think about what it was I was reading and studying. Whereas today, everything is driven by emotions, everything is driven by subjective prejudice. Back in the day, we used to, they used to try to drum that out of us. It's 
especially as undergraduates, who are we to think that our emotions about something matter when dealing with facts, when dealing with historical facts, when dealing with scientific facts, when dealing with objective facts, things that are true irrespective of how I feel about them. But the trouble today is that so many people think with their feelings, which is not really to think at all, but rather is to lose oneself in emotion, in passions. And we all know the dangers therein. We lose the ability to be able to think and see outside of ourselves, of our thinking, of our situation. We get lost in ourselves. And if we're not careful, being lost in ourselves, we become cut off from the external world. We get sucked and drawn in to that vacuum of isolation which eventually leads to nihilism and desolation and despair. And this is what we see in the thinking of contemporary theologians today. There is a considerable lack of faith, a considerable lack of hope, a considerable lack of charity toward God, making God instead our interior self-actualization rather than coming to and subjecting ourselves to him who is the external reality. That is objective truth. Let us then, my brothers and sisters, let us avail ourselves of the considerable wealth and richness of, collect, of, of the collected wisdom and knowledge of the doctors and fathers of the church throughout the centuries. When we are reading our Bibles, when we come across something difficult, let us not seek to dismiss it, let us not seek to manipulate it and bend it to our own way of thinking and feeling, but rather let us turn to that collective wisdom of 2,000 years. Look up the commentaries, see what those who have been recognised and acknowledged as saints said, how they interpreted and translated that portion of scripture and then seek to bend one's mind toward that external reference. Continually then ourselves looking outward toward God and ultimately of course to our home, our prize, our reward of eternal life with him. Let us seek the God without, that he may become for us the God within. Let us quell within ourselves that sense of self. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Credo 
in urum deum, patrem omnipotentem, patorum celi et terre visibilium omnium et invisibilium, et in urum dominum Iesum Christum filium demoni genitum, et ex patrin antum anti omnia secula, Deum de Deum, Lumen de Lumine, Deum Verum de Deum Vero, Genitum non factum consustantialem patri, peccam omnia factus sunt. Qui propter nos homines e propter nosum salutem, de scendi de celis, et infanatus est de Spiritus Santo ex Maria Virgine, et homo factus est. Crucifixus et siam pro nobis subhansio pelatu passus e sepultus est, et resurrexit tersi die secundus scripturas, et descendit in celum sedere et exeram patris. Et iterum venturus est un glorio unicat, vivos et motivos, cuius reni non eri fins. Et in spiritum santum dominum et purificantem, qui ex patri procedi, qui con patre et filio semole doritor et con glorificatur, cui locutus est per profetas. Et unam sanctam catolicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, Pam fiti on un baptismo e remissione per deformum, ed ex pecto resurrezione mortuorum, ed vita venturi secoli. Amen. Dominus obiscum, e cum spirito tuo. Orre. Veritas mes misericordia mes cum ipso et in nome mes saltabitur conu eus.
secula seculorum. Amen. Amen. Nominus obiscum et cum spiritu tuo, sos in corda, ave in ursa et domino, gratis a camus domino del nostro. Dignum et justum est, vere dignum et justum et tecum et salutare dei nostri qui sempre et ubi quae gratis agile domine sante pate, omnipotente et tene Deus. Qui cum origenito figlio tuo e spiritu santo, urus est Deus, urus est Dominus, non in unis langalitate e persone, sed in unis unitate e substantia. Poder in te tua gloria, velante te credi, un socio del figlio tuo, poco del spirito santo, sine de ferenzi e descrizioni sentimus. Voti che per Signore vera e centenari quei deitatis, e di persone sfavretas, e di essenzia unitas, e di maestate e d'oretro qualitas. Con laude d'angeli d'acqua e arcangeli cerro, in cuoco e serro, fin qui non c'è san clamare quotidie, una voce di centes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sacro,
Dus ik wil even binnen door. Secula seculorum. Amen. Arrem. Recepit salutaribus manti de vis luciani formati. Ademus Deus. Pater nostri et qui es in cei, sanctum et cei tu omum tuum. Ad veni ad regnum tuum, fiat volontas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. Parem nostrum quadriando nobis hodi, et dimitai nobis debitai nostra, sigle nostri mitimus debitoribus nostris. Ad veni nos educas in tentatia. Save the Lord, my soul. Amen. 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 Et cum spirito tuo.
Ece, anjus dei, ece qui tolit peccatum mundi. Domine, non sin dignus ut in te sin pectum meo, se tentum dic verbo et sen napitur anima mea. Domine, non sin dignus ut in te sin pectum meo, se tentum dic verbo et sen napitur anima mea. Domine, non sin dignus ut in te sin pectum meo, se tentum dic verbo et sen napitur anima mea. Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable therefore to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive Thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though Thou wert already there, I embrace Thee and unite myself wholly to Thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Amen.
rebus e prudens quem constitui dominus suba familia suam, ut et ilis in tempore tricidi moment sua. Dominus obiscum, et cum spiritu tuum, ordemus. Deus fidelium remuneratur animarnum, presta ut via si bonaventure confessoris tui atque pontificis, cuius venerandum celebramus festivitatem, recibus indulgentiam consequatum. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui decum vivida regna, tu meritati spiritus sancti Dei. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Vals celesti Domine Donus Atsiasti, presta Christus, ut a nostis munemur ocultis et apostium deberemur in signis. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tum, che te convivida regno ad umanitati solitus santi Deus. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus obiscum, et cum spirito tuo, et e missa est, in Deo gratias. Te nomen Domini benedictum, et ex hoc nubi dusque in secula, aut in volum nostri di nomine Domini, qui feci cielum et terra. Benedicat vos omnipotentes. Pater et filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Sequencia Sancti Evangelii secundum Matteo. Gloria a ti, Vita. In ino tempore dixit Iesus discipli suis, nisi avut averi giustizia veste plus quam scrivarum et fariseorum, non intravitis in regum celorum. Audissis qui addictum est antiquis, non occidens, qui autum occidenum drerus ere giudicio. Ego autum dico vobis, qui a omnis qui erisciatur fratris suo, reus ere giudicio, qui autum dixere fratris suo, raca, reus ere concilio, qui autum dixere fatue, reus ere gehene inis. Di ergo offens munus tuum ad altare, et ibi recolatus fueris, quia frate tuus habit aliquid vet ebesum te. Relinque ibi munus tuum ante altare, et vadi prius reconciliar di frate tuo. Et tu veriens offeris munus tuum. Deo, gratia. God save Elizabeth our Queen, and, and graciously hear us when we call upon thee. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, upon whom thy mercy has laid the government of this kingdom. May she be given so great a measure of every virtue, thus worthily adorned. May she turn aside from all wickedness. May she overcome her enemies and with her consort of the royal family. May she come at last in grace to thee, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. 